I am back. Um, paper two is around the corner, and I heard what you guys said about paper one bio. The level of slating you guys went to, respectable. Honestly, respectable. Let exam boards know. <laughs> um, you know, there might be some of you who thought, you know what, it was alright, it was a good paper, moved on, next exam, revising for that. But there might be some people who are still clinging on to the fact that they made silly mistakes, they couldn't answer the questions, they felt like their level of revision wasn't enough, or they just felt like all their hard work couldn't be shown in that paper. Okay? Don't worry. Do not worry at all. Okay? And I'm not just saying that. It's because me, in my exam season, the one paper I thought I did really bad on um, was my bio paper one. <laughs> That's the irony of everything. Um, and I genuinely thought I did really, really, really bad. Like, I started crying afterwards, it wasn't okay. Um, and I just felt like all my dreams of getting a star kind of went. <laughs> but I was wrong. And I got an extremely high percentage on that paper. You just never know. Have you ever, like, done an exam where you thought, you know what, I did not get anything. I'll be lucky to even get a D. But then you end up doing pretty well. And there's some exams you thought you did well, but you didn't. You never know. So what I'm trying to say is just leave it to God, okay? Leave it to the side. I know you're still agonising and just still being really upset about it and that's fine. But to be honest with you, time is money and energy is your currency. You have to move on, okay? Swallow the pill and just move on and start revising for your next exam. You cannot dwindle on the past because genuinely you're not going to get any gains from it. And sometimes... You, Acknowledge your feelings, but also dismiss it because you actually don't have time. You really don't. Okay, time is money. Like time is money, and time is ticking. So what we can do is sort ourselves out. So welcome to the last minute advice A level bio paper two exam. I am going to start off with the mindset just for today. Okay, mostly because I know how everyone felt after paper one. Quite simply, you didn't wake up today. And you didn't wake up all the other days in your life to just be average, okay? You're put in this world, you're put into this position, in this time, in this era, for a reason. So to be different, you need to act different. And to act different, you need to be different. <laughs> what I really want you to do is just think about paper one. What could you have improved? Was it a type of question and methodology to, towards it? Was it that you need to practice your analysis, application? Was it that you couldn't even write the answer? Like, you had something in your head, but you couldn't articulate it? What was the issue? Target this, okay? And remember, you didn't wake up to be average. So do not act average, okay? Do not fall victim of your situation, okay? You're the, you're the, bo like, you're the big boss, so act like it, okay? Cool. So... Um, right, let's begin, shall we? In the chemistry paper one, last minute advice, you guys adored that I um, did the whole bonus thing of giving you a set of questions and you answering in the comment section. So I did that for bio as well. These are just a few. So the rules are, right, I'm not going to answer them. I want everyone to write their answers in the comment section. And then the night before the exam, I will heart to the ones that are most correct or the ones that are... um like the best response to the questions the thing is the questions i'm asking here aren't black and white like how they were in the chem video this is very much subjective to how you're doing it but that's why i said i'm gonna heart the ones that are the better ones out of the rest you know so first question is for describe the graph what is your way of approaching it and the most correct way that you found and then when it comes to laying out um your answers, are you going to do paragraphs, bullet points, headings, like what are you going to do? Which one do you think is the best method? Um, at the end of the day, the examiners are just people who just want to make extra money in summer, okay? Please make it easy for them. <laughs> They're tired. They just want they just want to put food on the table. So maybe that should uh, give you a bit of a hint about that question. Next one. How do you analyse a claim or conclusion a scientist or a student states? And how do you approach evaluate questions? Do you have a methodology? Um, and what things do you need to mention in order for a practical to be valid? And why is it that those certain things are mentioned? Okay, I look forward to seeing your comments down below, okay? And you know what? If you don't know the answer to some of them, no problem. Just say, okay, question three, I don't know. 
somebody else is going to comment on it this community i absolutely adore like you guys are amazing and you just are answering each other's questions is actually so wholesome um we're all trying to hit win here okay so just help each other out and really ponder about these questions okay because it will help you a lot in paper two and it's the reason why i'm asking you them anyways let's begin step one resource maxing um paper two in my opinion and I just went through uh, all the paper twos again just before recording this just to remind myself it's very um, content heavy but it's not like oh constantly describe this process explain this process no 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 I mean that the answer in the marks is very content heavy at the end of the day module six in particular for example OCLA is so so much by we've got like biotech cloning um god population sustainability patterns of inheritance like all of that is juicy content why would they not ask it you know it may be in terms of analysis but i will argue that paper two is more content than paper one paper one's like more application-y paper two still is but content matters a lot and the thing is people neglect the content in this paper because it's harder and they just focus on paper one so you just need to think how can you get ahead is by knowing all the ins and outs of the modules so just make sure your content is tip top Okay, and um, I said resource, ma resource maxing because this video, they're long for a reason because I uh, give you specific stuff. That I'm not about giving you general advice. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you will know this. I give very niche advice. I'm not here to be general. Um, hence why they're quite long. But there are um, websites and YouTubers and stuff that I recommend. So I'd strongly advise you to watch these two videos afterwards. So that it can help you with learning the content in the best way, really. And now, <laughs> oh man, this video over here is such an interesting video. <laughs> My analytics, two days and the night before the bio exam, went crazy. Okay, this video in particular, insane. Everyone and their mums were watching it. And guess what came up in the exam? T-test, apparently, and the whole stats thing. Like, hypothesis testing. And that was the first thing I mentioned in that video. So before any bio exam, it should be a ritual that you re-watch this video. It's literally so comprehensive. I've put everything you need. And in terms of mark schemes, wording as well. So, ultimate video, stats. Um, in paper two, for example, OCRA, it's more like uh, Hardy Weinberg, Kai Squared, or Spearman's um, rank, whatever, and they're all in this video, so definitely watch this, okay? Watch this now and watch this the night before as well. Again, I've got the mark scheme wording for it, so I'd recommend. And then, oh, come on, words. Those of people who told me how useful it was, uh, how I said in the paper one reminder, advice thing, about understanding what the command words say, and it's true. It's like this. Somebody tells you, oh, so-and-so, can you tell me how to make a, I don't know, can you teach me how to make rice? But then you start talking about the biochemistry behind rice. No, they want the method. They want the step-by-step, -step, not the biochemistry. Do you get what I mean? That kind of like shows you how important command words are. Because for a, like a, a graph question, and it just says describe the graph, but you're explaining, oh, you know, it increases because of kinetic energy. Do you think you're going to get marks? No, because that's not what the question wanted you to say. Okay, don't make stuff up. And that's what I explain in these videos. This evaluation question, um, exam question walkthrough, highly recommend. I go through uh, specific ones and I tell you the methodology. And then this one, command words explained. I just break down what you need for outline, compare, whatever. This seems like me plugging, but it's all free resources. And there's nothing new that I can say. Everything's there. So it's just m more me guiding you in terms of what you should do after the video. Now, exam technique maxing. We all know that in chem, we can get the marks. Just memorize the mark scheme. But here, you really need to understand in bio what the question wants and then tailor your answer to that. It's not, you can't do it blindly at all, is what I'm trying to say. So if you didn't know already and if you didn't have a method, well, you can listen to my method. I read the question first. What does that mean? It means that I don't read the info that's above the question. I don't care. I don't care until 
I care. <laughs> then I rephrase the question. What I mean by that is if it says, oh, um, I don't know, evaluate the student's claim and then the conclusion was something, something, or there was a question that says, like, explain this process when it comes to this. I would rephrase it into a question that I can immediately answer. Because let's be so frank, right? The exam questions are quite wordy, and most of the time you might not understand what it wants. But if you rephrase it into something that you can answer, almost like a flashcard question, then you will activate the knowledge in your head and the content, and they will write it. Because you need to understand, no matter how freaked out you get in the exam, they cannot put or ask you anything that is not on the spec. Have solace in that fact, okay? Then I check the command word. Is it evaluate? If it is, then I use my framework for evaluation questions. Is it a question on um, describe? Then I will um, use my describe framework, you know? And then I would ask myself, yeah, what does the command word expect from me? Because they there is expectations, okay? An evaluate question and a compare question are not the same. An outline question and a suggest question are not the same. Okay, you can't treat them the same way either. And then if I can answer the question based on what I did from step one, um, step one to four, then I'll just answer it. But if I can't, then I would read the information to see whether it will help me or not. The reason why I don't go from info to question um, is because I don't know, my my answers were really odd when I used to do that. Like I couldn't write my answer down it was almost as if i wanted to use the info when it has no relevancy so i just flipped the order to be honest and then yeah just answer it and then re remember guys state the obvious points okay i always talk about nick wilde i didn't put up an image of him oh i should have um but nick wilde from zootopia he a very nonchalant guy act like him okay be very sly about it just state the obvious points just say it for how it is okay do not Overcomplicate, overcomplicate your points. It's not an English exam. Relax, okay? Sit back, drink some water. You'll be fine. Just say what you know. Speed run content almost. Some, especially with six markers, can I just say? But I go through specifically that whole methodology in these um, playlists. Um, I got them from one, two, four, and six. Um, so I'd highly recommend you go through the exam question walkthroughs that I've done here. And there's quite a few. And again, I talked through my methodology, which then did help me to get an eight star. So I'd recommend. But remember, you can know all the content, but my opinion is that you would be kept at a C, but the moment you have some exam technique to it, then you get above a C, like B, A or A star. But between an A and A star, it's very much very specific stuff, which you I talk about in these videos and these videos here as well and that's pretty much it really again as i said you didn't wake up to be average so don't act like it okay keep it stepping keep going forward keep going up the ladder and just remember one thing just anything you take away from this video is that stupid people have done this before and they've been successful so why on earth can you not do it everyone can do it okay remember you don't need to get 100 percent to get like, for example, an A star, or to get a B, or an A, or whatever. Did you an A star? is like, what, 60-something percent? Come on, you can do it, okay? I've got everything on my channel, so please do use it, if you would like. And, yeah, just remember to focus on your content. Make sure that is tip-top, like cellular control. Do you know what a homeobox gene is? Do you know it specifically um, what hox genes are? Um, do you know the aseptic techniques? Like, whatever, whatever, right? It's like you're trying to um, write in in like a French exam, but you don't know any French vocabulary. That makes no sense. You need to know the vocab, like how you need to know the content. And then from that point on, once you know everything specifically, do the most you can in terms of answering as many questions as possible and exam technique maxing. And yeah, I hope that was useful, okay? Put everything that's happened in the past behind you and just keep swimming forward. Then hopefully this will be better. And then paper three, you really round off your performance. And then you hopefully, you know, results say you'll be smiling.
as always, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. If you have any suggestions, also write it down. And please do let me know how the paper goes, okay? I wish you all the very, very best. And I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye.